Hey guys, it's Edward. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the fundamentals of an engineering resume. A lot of you have a very big misconception of what resume writing entails. While most of you think it's about trying to hit those key words in technology stacks, the fact of the matter is that it's far more than that. Because while hitting those key words might get you past the automatic filtering system, a human being is ultimately going to read it, and you're going to have to impress that person in order to even get the phone screen. Keep in mind, the resume is meant to be an on paper cursory introduction to who you are as a professional developer. So today, I'm going to give you the basic framework and philosophy of how your resume should flow and what I personally look for as an ex Apple senior engineer. The reason why I'm doing this instead of a top five tips is because everyone's experience in tech stacks are going to be different. And if I get into the details without going into the overarching ideas, you're going to be lost and confused. I'll also go over some examples on LinkedIn of what I think good resume and experience writing looks like. Finally, I'll address some questions that you guys have submitted on my discord channel. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and watch this until the very end. It lets me know you like videos like this and you want to see more of them. And if you follow me on my socials, you can vote for what topic I cover next. So with that, let's begin. Now there are three basic ideas every resume should have, regardless of your tech stack or the company you want to apply to. The first thing is that every statement should make me care. Every piece of work you do is meant to showcase your skill and engineering prowess and impact. While not everything you work on will be mind-blowingly impressive, Everyone starts somewhere. The idea is to make the reader at the other end care about what you did and why you did it. And keep in mind, the reader is also an engineer who is thinking whether or not you can do the work they want you to. Consider the difference between these two statements. Assembled and tested two mobile applications using Kotlin and XML to analyze various obese children's eating habits versus developed and deployed mobile applications to combat childhood obesity, resulting in 70% drop in lower income neighborhoods. Now, I think most of us would actually care a little bit more about the second statement, but why? The first one does have a bit more engineering to it because it mentions development and those tech stack keywords. But the second one shows the impact of the engineering effort. And I guarantee you that a human being reading would choose the second one in spite of the lack of a tech stack mention. Of course, the best version of these two statements would be to combine these two into one. Design, developed, and deployed Android iOS applications using Kotlin and XML to low income neighborhoods, resulting in a 70% drop in childhood obesity. Notice here, we combine the best of both worlds, the tech stack keywords and the result. But you might say, wait, this is engineering. Shouldn't the company only care about what language or tech stack we worked with? This isn't right. Only our technical skill and impact should count. The insight you forget is that at the end of the day, the company is a business. It exists to make money and your impact shows that you have the judgment to channel your efforts into something profitable or meaningful instead of a meaningless side project that goes nowhere. Tech comes and goes and languages and tech stacks that were popular 30 years ago are not even being used now. But the engineering ability to identify and fix problems will always be there. The tech just exists to help you do that. Whether it's a system like Kafka or a language feature like Kotlin coroutines, it really doesn't matter. These are just tools for you to actually solve a problem. So the question is, what problem did you solve using technology? It can be social or technical, but I just use social here to illustrate a point that your misconception of what people really care about at the end of the day is completely wrong. This is also the reason why spamming your resume with hit keywords and tech stacks will only get you so far because you need to show what you do with it. So to help focus your efforts, I would recommend the action detail result formula. So let's actually parse the statement I just gave you. The action here is design, developed, and deployed Android or iOS applications. The detail is the language or tech stack or the nuance that makes the activity special. And the result is the impact. Usually metrics and numbers are good enough to qualify the result. But sometimes the result can be intangible, especially in projects that are designed to be goodwill and charity. Ultimately, each accomplishment you state should make me go, wow, holy shit, this is awesome. Or for lack of a better way of putting it, it makes your engineering effort sexy. The second element I want you to focus on is the story of you as a professional. See, the resume is a cover story of you as a professional. Think of it like an anime, like Hero Academia. Nobody's gonna watch an anime where Deku goes from a small, weak, scrawny boy to a small, weak, scrawny boy after three seasons. And the same applies for you. You need to be able to show that you have some kind of growth and trajectory in your career, where you're aiming and what you're doing. Incidentally, this is also why most resumes are arranged in chronological order. 
we want to highlight the top experiences that are the most recent because they tend to be the most relevant. Also, humans are pretty lazy and will only read like the first half of the page before moving on, so you better make the first few experiences count. So let's actually take an example. Suppose you worked on three projects. You worked as a Python backend contractor between 2012 and 2013. Before that, you worked on Node.js on an on-campus startup. And prior to that, you worked as an Android dev. Now, each of these three might actually be pretty solid experiences, especially for a new grad. And while you might think that three years of experience would put you at a borderline mid-level engineer, I personally read this and think that you're a passable entry-level candidate. I just read this as you have no idea what you're doing. You're just bouncing between job and job without knowing what tech stack you really want to master. And as they say, jack of all trades, master of none. How do I know that you're very good with the tech stack you are working with? The truth is that I don't, and I have every reason to believe that you don't even have a deep understanding of engineering itself. Quality assurance and tech company prestige aside, I only see you deploying products. I don't see you maintaining your own code or developing the product beyond the initial deployment. I don't see you progressing in your craft. I don't see you sticking with a project long enough to see the results of your own work. For that reason, you could take away two experiences and nothing would fundamentally change about your resume. And the third thing is what makes you special? And while you might make progress churning out product after product and landing features after features, the fact of the matter is that the very best engineers have an X factor to them. Sure, the feature can require you to navigate four different organizations. Sure, the feature can require you to have a team of people underneath you to implement. Yes, you can have a multi-million dollar impact with these products. But what makes you different is that your work needs to be uniquely challenging. It makes people ask, Shit, can I even do what this person does? Can anyone replace this guy? And the higher level you are, the fewer people should be able to say that they can replace you. The ability to create a product at a self-sufficient pace and know what needs to be done at a larger and larger scale is what will separate you from everyone else. I need something that says, hey, this is something very few people are doing and you're doing it. That can be a problem that usually is not given to someone of your level, or it can be something extremely big in scope. Either way, it doesn't have to be some mind-blowing technical paper or something crazy and out there. It just has to be something a little bit more complex than what the next guy can do, and you just have to deliver on it. And I know a lot of it is up to interpretation, but the fact of the matter is that that factor will get you hired over the next guy. Experienced engineers will be reading your resume and it's up to their experience to dictate how this factor will be interpreted. But chances are, is that if you can do something that no one else in your company can do or one of your peers can't do at a very high proficiency, then there is a very high likelihood that somewhere in the world, someone else who is reading your resume will appreciate your effort. My point here is that this portion of resume writing actually extends beyond the writing itself. You need to make sure that every day in your career, you are progressing and making effort to improve your code and craft whether that's taking on more responsibility or trying new ideas. If you cannot figure out anything that differentiates you from your peers, chances are you're doing the bare minimum at your job to get by and you need to really reevaluate yourself. All right, so I know I've covered the basics, but let's actually look at some solid examples that you can copy. I'll link their LinkedIn in the description down below. Let's take this first one. The, this first guy is Aditya. I met this guy while he was working at Essential, the phone company. He is phenomenally smart and a very charismatic leader and you can kind of get that from his resume. While he doesn't strictly follow the action detail result formula, you still understand exactly what he's doing and why it's important. Again, the whole reason I'm recommending you start with this formula is just a starting point. What's more important is that you follow the spirit of the law, not the letter. So let's actually take a look at what he does. He adapts it in a way that's a little more human readable and more friendly rather than as a list of numbers or accomplishments. Let's take a very early example of his work. He proposed an architecture for Zigbee on Android and Linux that differentiates itself from other offerings in developer friendliness. He also implemented basic components of the architecture in C and Java. So here, you can see that he takes the initiative in deploying and developing internal tools and code for the company. You can tell that he has a natural tendency for leadership early on in his career because he naturally puts forward propositions and takes action. Furthermore, the fact that he's thinking about architecture and how the application in general works shows you that he is capable of thinking beyond his role as a consultant. This is something anyone can do, even if they're an intern or had no job experience whatsoever. You can highlight your leadership. You can emphasize that you went above and beyond the job that you were normally asked. And as you can see, he begins to roll that experience with more Android related stuff. And in this particular statement, he's just rattling off the apps that he built. But I think this is an exception to the rule. The point here is that the sheer number is meant to highlight his experience with the Android open source framework more than his company impact or any numbers that he might provide. If this is the point, then it's pretty acceptable. After all, 
if you're trying to say that you are an Android expert, then you really need to have as many apps as possible under your belt, especially the ones that directly touch the Android framework. So following this experience, we would expect him to take a deeper dive into the Android framework. And you can kind of see this as his career trajectory to a director of software at an Android focused company was pretty natural given the path that he had laid out for himself. But you can see that he led a team that modified the Android framework and was able to coordinate with Google's engineers in order to fix various bugs that were found during development. So you can see that his story has been going from working on random applications to focusing on Android and even submitting fixes to the Android project itself outside of Google. But during his tenure, he's been extremely focused on code architecture and platform. Being able to lead a group of engineers that deploys code on a wide scale and be able to get appreciation from Google is massively impressive. Let's take one more person. I'm not gonna go too much detail into this one because a lot of the points that I've mentioned are actually reflected in his statements as well. Instead, I want you to focus on his story and his oomph factor. He first starts off by talking about the product deployment and the improvements that he made on it. After he gets promoted, he talks about migrating from one service to another in order to improve stream processing. And as a staff software engineer, he developed a mechanism in order to improve searches. So. As you can see, Almog's story is one of optimization and craftsmanship on the very same team he started with. He is very technically focused on design and optimization. He went from optimizing deployment and local areas of search infrastructure to creating and leading projects that refactored and improved legacy code and batch processing. Unlike Aditya, who tends to focus on architecture and structure in Android, Almog is an optimizer and technical problem solver. You might hire him for some stream processing optimizations with Kafka, legacy code migration, or some extremely nuanced system that requires a high level of attention. I don't think I would hire him as a product engineer either because it would probably bore him. And his past experience tells me that he'd rather work on something highly technical and optimize on a very unique and interesting problem. If I hired him for the wrong role, he'd switch and we'd have to start the search all over again. On the other hand, you might hire Aditya to work on some platform level ideas that span an entire company. With that, let's actually answer some questions from Discord. What makes tech employers most happy or confident about a fresher when they see his or her resume. In my opinion, what makes tech employees most happy and confident about seeing a fresher is that the person actually shows a hunger for improvement and learning. GPA is just one factor for getting someone's attention and getting your foot in the door. Something that's much more appreciated is that a person displays genuine interest in the field they are in. There are a lot of factors that go into this and hiring at lower levels can be chaotic as hell, whether that's ranging from headcount to attrition to even just simple reorganization. But I think as long as you have a very core dedication to your tech stack and learning and you're very competent at it, you really can't go too wrong. Eventually, someone will see that you are putting a lot of time and effort into it and will notice you. Show that you can do a very deep dive of some very interesting problems that no one else can really do. Do employers value projects done by yourself? Are they worth putting on the resume apart from normal college academia stuff? Well, if we follow the logic of what makes you stand out, then pound for pound, a person with projects is going to stand out from someone without them. The reason is self-direction, leadership, and the ability to drive a project from start to finish. Most students, in my opinion, focus on internships, but very few do long-lived projects. If you can turn a project into a viable business, I think that's actually worth a lot more than a FANG internship. So that'll do for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, Feel free to connect with me on my socials where you can vote for what topic you want to see next. And if you want to try and secure the next job offer, you can book me for interview coaching at eChantech.com. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. <music>